If you've been following along with the videos in this unit, by now you've developed a testable hypothesis. Does your hypothesis look something like this one? The fish kill was caused by a chemical spill of acid into the river. There are other hypotheses that could be tested, but we'll be planning our investigation based on this one. And that leads us to science and engineering practice number three, planning and carrying out an investigation. As we mentioned earlier, if you're planning and carrying out an investigation as an employee of the State Department of Natural Resources, you need to collect water samples from the river and to know exactly where those water samples came from. Some of the samples should be from where the fish died, while others should come from areas both upriver and downriver from that site. Once you've collected the water samples, you need to measure the level of acid and base in those samples. Bases are also known as alkali. Measuring the acid or base is known as measuring the pH. We'll learn more about pH later in this series. For now, just recognize that there are two ways to measure pH. First, by immersing the tip of a digital pH meter into the water sample and writing down the pH value. This is numerical data, so it's quantitative data. The second way to test pH is by placing a chemical indicator into the water. If the color changes, you know there's an acid or alkali present. Now this doesn't tell you the exact pH value, but by comparing the color to a known scale, you'll know if the water is acid or alkali. We'll be comparing variables found in different areas, so this kind of investigation is called an experiment. Every experiment is an investigation, but not every investigation is an experiment. If you're watching this as part of a formal chemistry class, your teacher should be able to help you conduct this experiment on water samples they already have. To start, you'll be performing the first part of science and engineering practice number three, planning and carrying out an investigation. Make sure you write down information about the samples you'll collect, like what they are, where you'll collect them, how many samples you'll collect, and how you'll measure them. We'll go back to our classroom in the next video when you're ready to continue.